it's Susie here. Welcome to this episode of the Her Business Podcast. Today, we have a special guest, and I always love it when I get to bring on an amazing expert. And this expert happens to be one of the fabulous members of the Her Business Network and part of our Marketing Success Mastermind program. And we're going to be delving into an area that's often misunderstood, especially in small business, and that is the idea of branding. So often we think about branding as something that's important if you've got a bigger business, but you're going to see that it's not that and you're also going to see why branding is not your logo and we're going to talk about why branding matters and why as a business owner you want to be having a little piece of your brain uh, thinking about it. Uh, Melissa's going to introduce us to her unique brand gap map. It's a model that she's created to help businesses identify where they are with their brand and where they want to go. And it brings to us the wonderful experience that she uses to help professional service-based businesses to connect with their ideal clients through her effective strategies and her innovative methods. Now, before we talk to Melissa, right now inside the Her Business Network, our community is focused on what we call the people growth zone. And our growth zones are eight areas of business that every successful business has working for them. Excuse me. And the people growth zone incorporates how you hire people, how you train them, motivate them, even how you make the decision whether it's the right time to grow or shrink your team. And the reason that I mention this is that the people growth zone also relates to your extended team, consultants, designers, copywriters, your bookkeeper, all the people who may not be on your payroll, but they support you in getting things done and they help you step more and more into your role of leading and motivating. Now, when you're growing a business from, say, $100,000 to $250,000 or $500 or a million, you can only do so much on your own. And while we can bring on teams, we may at times need skills that we don't actually need a full-time person or someone on our team to have, but they're skills that they need. And branding is one of those things. And that's why I've brought branding expert Melissa Horvath of Graphica into this episode. So let's go ahead and go to the interview with her. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you how you can start to better understand your brand and how to make it a perfect match for the ideal clients that you want to work with. Here we go. Hey, Melissa, welcome to the show. Hi, Susie. Thanks for having me. Very excited. I'm, I'm so excited to have you here and to have this conversation. I just explained that you help professional service-based businesses connect with their ideal clients through branding, through graphic design, and through digital services. And so today, I really want to dive into this topic of brand. So I want to kick off with a fundamental question, and that is, you know, what does it even matter? As small business owners, especially women, why should we care about our brand in the first place? Wow. Okay. So... Honestly, if you didn't care about your brand, um, you shouldn't be in business, to be honest. So the term brand is often loosely used and often misunderstood. Um, So I think if we didn't care about it, our businesses would fail miserably because our brand is literally everything that makes up our business. It's how we present ourselves. It's how we talk to our customers. It's that whole vibe that goes out to the world. Um, that represents who we are. So I think um, a brand is sometimes the difference between two people selling exactly the same product Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one customer or one uh, business being totally run off their feet and has a book full of clients versus um, someone who doesn't. So um, I think that um, your brand, I, I really love the phrase that your your brand is um, when people People often talk about you when you're not in the room in a right. way mm. is, a, is a really great phrase that I love. So yeah. the difference between caring and versus not caring is super important. Yeah, and I don't know who said that, that your brand is actually what people say when you're not in the room, but that has always stuck with me as well. And I just want to follow up on what we were just talking about uh, because especially as small business owners, we sometimes think that brand is for the big companies um, uh, or that brand is my logo or the colours that I use. But you've just said to us, no, it's not that. It's more than that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it definitely is. And we often have... um, customers come to us and say, can you design me a a brand? Uh, And what they're meaning is, can you design me an identity for the brand Mm -hmm. that I am um, putting out to the world? So, yeah, so your brand is everything. It's how you talk to your customers. It's how you answer the phone. And I've got a 
a really great uh, presentation that I tell show my customers, and that is uh, two different car companies, and one where you walk in, and and the cost of that car is, you know, hundreds of thousands compared to the cheaper model, and how you are presented when you walk into that showroom. The com- the com- total difference is is all about how they're branding themselves. Mm. And we're, you know, people are walking into our showroom all the time. You know, they're coming to our website, they're coming to our webinars, they're getting an email from us. And that showroom, you know, doesn't have to be the $100,000 car if that's not who we are. <clears throat> but the question is, is it true to who we are exactly. and who we want to be perceived at? Now, you've created this wonderful model called the Brand Gap map. We're going to talk about that here today, but could you tell us a little more about it and how it can help women entrepreneurs see where they are with their brand and where they want their brand to go? Absolutely. So the brand gap map is a process that we have created at Graphica. Um, and it's um, it's a process that it can be used for anybody, whether or not you've just started your business or you've been in business for five, 10 years. But it's basically looking at where you currently are in your business and your brand and where you want to be. Um, And it's just the process in between of filling in those gaps to get where you want to be. Um, So, yeah, it's it's a great little model and it, it just steps out the roadmap to success. We are going to give you a little later details on how you can have a conversation with Melissa about creating your own brand I'm going to say this wrong now, and I brand gap map. Um, but for now, um, I'd love for you to go through some of the steps with us, just so we get a high level kind of idea of it. Now, one of the steps is to step out and look in. What does that really mean for the small business owner? How does stepping out and looking in change our perspective, possibly change our perspective on our brand? Absolutely. So in my opinion, I think this is the most important part of the process when it comes mm-hmm. to creating that gap map because mm-hmm. um, often as business owners we're just so stuck in the trenches of our business that we don't take the time to step out and look in as though we are a customer or a client mm-hmm. so that this is part of that process and we do step back we look in and go okay well if we've been in business for a, quite some time potentially what we're showing on our website or our services may have changed or is is that photograph really a true representation of how we now (laughs) so there are lots of bits and pieces that we we look at across Mm. the whole board and yeah step out and look in because it's and and so does the client step out and look in because i wouldn't be be too close to it well maybe we wouldn't be Or do you step out and look in or do they step out and look in? Well, I mean, you could do it. So we usually do it with our clients. So yeah, that would be helpful. We Mm. often step out with them. um, And they it's a bit of a revelation for them. They're like, oh my goodness, like we because we're so involved in what we do and love Mm. what we do, we often talk about how great we are. But it's really like, well, who are you talking to? You need to talk to your customers and your clients and and Mm. and their problems. So, and what what they're searching for in in your services. Yeah. And especially, like you said, if you've been in business for a while, you've had that website for a while or that landing page or whatever it is, we get a, you know, a bit of a scotoma. We don't even see it anymore. Um, And sometimes I know even for me, it's, you know, we might run a program and then we'll run it again six months later and I'll see things and I go, oh, (laughs) I didn't see that the first time, you know, because like you said, we're so entrenched in what we're doing. Uh, Now let's dive into a couple more parts of this brand map and that is the plan and the roadmap part of your model. Mm. How can a small business owner break down their journey into these stages, the plan and the roadmap? Yes. Okay. So this is really now where we've worked out where those gaps are Mm -hmm. and it's committing to the course. So we work out, okay, what is it that we need? Do we need to update that logo that potentially we designed in Word when we started three years ago? (laughs) Now is not a true reflection of our services. Or is it, um, like I said, the it could be just refreshing that logo with new fonts and colours to bring it forward could it be that the text and copywriting on your website is out of date or your services need updating Mm. potentially you've grown your team your photographs just need to be redone because you look different because I often look at mine and think oh my goodness like I 
I now have a few extra wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was and that is the same thing. I, I wish. saw some photos from a couple of weeks ago. I went, oh, I know, <laughs> me too. And I recently just had a photo shoot done. I was like, oh my goodness, do I really look like that? <laughs> uh, so it's really um, working out those bits and pieces that we need and mm. then determining who is going to now do them. So do we need to hire a copywriter? Do we need a photographer? Do we need a graphic designer? Or could we do it ourselves? A lot, And a lot of the time as business owners and women in business want to do everything themselves, of mm. course, and have the ability to sometimes. So do we just need to update our website when you copy mm. or just update those photographs? Is that enough? Or do we mm. do need a full style guide and logo? So it's that I love it. That plan. I love it. So we've got the plan, and mm. then the roadmap is the who's doing what when. Is That's that right. right? Who's doing right. what when, and yes, how we get there. So one of the things I want to say, and because you made the point about a lot of business owners, like we can do a lot ourselves and often we try and do ourselves, but I'm always about playing within our zone of genius Mm -hmm. and not our zone of incompetence. And I know that I'm always discouraging women from tinkering around in the back of their website (laughs) or doing their own design, especially if you want to grow a profitable, sustainable six or seven figure business. This might be one of the things that you want to outsource that you want to invest in. And I remember we were called the Australian Business Women's Network for about 20 years. And it was just over seven years ago now that we changed to her business. And because of the name change, like everything kind of changed and the branding changed. And I took myself from being very much behind the scenes of the business to being further forward. And, you know, it started with the logo and that was kind of the linchpin, but so many things changed. Suddenly we opened up the opportunity to speak differently, to use different language. We went from feeling more like an association to being the entrepreneurial hive that we are. And so your brand can really impact a lot of things and a small change can make a big difference. Now, I also want to say the same thing that If you don't have a sustainable business model, if you don't have clients, if you don't have products and services, tinkering with your brand may or may not be the best thing for you to do right now. And I'm sure that's the sort of advice you also give, Melissa, because if they don't know who their ideal client is, then how is the website going to look? How are they going to be attracting people if they haven't done some of the fundamentals? Um, And so there's an order to these things, but the brand becomes more important, I think, once your business has legs. And so I love that you, one, you step back, you look at it objectively with, you know, a new set of eyes through a new lens. You then create the plan and then the roadmap, how we're going to get there. And often these changes in brand, they can be a few little tweaks, but sometimes, and I know like our brand rollout was months, really, mm-hmm. because the brand was in so many places. Um, one of the things that is also part of our brand that you mentioned is our story. Can you talk to us a little about how telling our story um, can uplift our brand as women business owners. Absolutely. So telling the story is um, is is now when you launch it to the world. <clears throat> so we tell our story through our socials, through our website. And as business owners, <clears throat> we're so connected to our businesses. We know the hard work that goes into it. And often it's I think it's super important for our personalities to come out through our brand mm-hmm. and telling those stories to connect to our clients is uh, is one is is a huge part of our branding and I recommend that to a lot of our clients and and one great example actually is um, a local business owner that we recently. Mm-hmm did some work with or hasn't been recent it's been some time now but she is a it's a female-led business she's a conveyancing firm and she'd had some quite some negative experiences working for other businesses and um telling the truth and being honest with her clients was one of her really big values Mm. Uh, so when she started her business weaving that through her brand was super important and part of her business name was actually veritas and veritas is the goddess of truth uh so we we weave that through a whole brand. We created a logo using the wings of the goddess of truth. Mm. It was just such a beautiful story. Uh, and that just continues on through her brand today. And she's very successful with her brand. And she doesn't look or sound like other conveyancing firms. Absolutely. Mm. And and that is a super important thing too, to, to be unique with your brand. And when it's your story, it's always unique. So that is. Yeah, that's a really good point because we might think, oh, look, you know, I'm just another graphic 
designer or I'm just another stylist or I'm not just another pool installation company or I'm just another conveyancer. But your brand is what can really stand you apart. And I find that you can tell, you can up-level how your business is perceived very, very quickly by up-leveling your brand. Because if it looks like, unless your brand being looks like a done-by-you brand, which can serve some brands, right? Some brands, Absolutely. it doesn't have to be, you know, finessed. But yeah. for others, I know if I go to two websites and one looks like it was a DIY mm. and the other one looks more professional, I know which one I'm going to, you know, use the shopping cart for and which one oh, I might just absolutely. back away. And, <laughs> that's, away. and that's yeah. funny because a lot of our clients will come to us and go, this is my idea, this is what I've sketched and it's exactly what I want. And I always say to them, okay, great, we will show you that concept but we'll also show you a concept that potentially you hadn't thought about. Uh, and that's usually the path they go down they're blown away with that idea or just hadn't thought that that could even be an option be possible so. yeah great so because you're also working with them on their websites and you're implementing the brand across you know every you know the communication all pieces platforms. all the things great yeah sure. now um thank you so what we're going to do is we're going to put some details on the show notes page and i'll give you a link to the show notes page later so if you're interested in having a um again i'm going to have to look back at it because i've the name's gone out of my head you know why because there's two words that sound similar and they're brand right next to each other map. the brand gap map which is actually a very catchy title <laughs> i love it if you would like to have a brand gap map done we're going to give you the details so that you can contact melissa now melissa's an established business owner she's had the business for 14 years she has a team of people she's got a healthy um, revenue and as um, she knows and as you might know if you're a regular listener of the show inside of her business every single month we focus in on one of our her business growth zones now these are eight areas of business that every sustainable profitable business has working for them so that we don't have a lopsided business we're equally strong in our planning and our systems and our marketing and our people and our money and our all these eight areas this month, as this episode goes to air, is all about people. And when we talk about people, as you know, Melissa, we're not just talking about people who are on your payroll, but we're talking about the people who we as entrepreneurs surround ourselves with, who help sustain us, who help encourage us, who are help us produce results in our business, who fill the gaps that we might have in our skill set or in our mindset. What? How do you think about team in your business? And who do you bring around you to leverage your time and energy in your thinking? Mm. So, I mean, when I first started my business, it was just me and mm. I relied on my family and my husband. I'd often ask him for advice. Now, as the business has grown, uh, gosh, I have a, an amazing team that helped me. My graphic designer and production manager are amazing. Um, I have a bookkeeper that I have had for gosh, 14 years, and she, I'm, wow. I'm always calling her for advice. She's just my advisor, if you like. So Love I ask it. her, and, and she knows me so well that if I want to buy something or do something, she's like, why are you doing that or what are you doing that for? And she'll always ask um, some great questions. So she's a, a fantastic support and keeps me on track. Uh, obviously, the Her Business Network is a huge part of my support people. Um, I'm part of the Mastermind, which I absolutely love, and I am now utilising the Facebook group. Even I posted something in the group last night and the support that I got blew my mind and oh, completely led me in a direction that I hadn't even known. So I am learning every day there. The Goals Group that's through the Her Business Network, I love my Goals Group. Um, they are the best bunch and, and we're always messaging each other with ideas and support. Right. Um, oh, look, I have heap, I have a lot of people that I rely on, mm. uh, other networking organisations, local women in business networks. Yeah. It takes a team, right? It takes oh, a team. I have a yeah. big team. Yeah. And the, I see the difference between businesses that are struggling and business owners who are struggling and those who are thriving. And I can tell you, without fail those who are thriving are not trying to do it all on their own and so thank you for saying that and for those of yes. you who are listening who might be wondering what a goals group is i'll explain a little later on <laughs> i can tell you what that is uh melissa i we have a tagline inside of her business as you know the tagline is do what you love every day tell us what does it look like when you are doing what you love 
So I recently had someone say to me, oh, my God, you've been a graphic designer for 24 years. Aren't you sick of what you do? I was like, no, I feel like I'm only getting started in my business. So I'm really grateful that I have found what I love. Mm-hmm. graphic designing is what I love so I do what I love every day it is literally my passion uh, I'm very grateful that I um, have a business where I can it, it is designed around my family it started for mm-hmm. my family and I literally yeah. build it around my family so doing what I love every day means that I can get up have my coffee do my exercise take my children to school work within hours and then be there for them when I come home so being stressed would not be something that I love every day. <laughs> so create, creating the business around that mm. relieves that pressure and that guilt that I used to feel when I was working as for someone else. So, so yeah, that's I, I love what I do. I love that. And 24 years and you're still, you know, connected to your vision, connected to your plan. You're getting the support around you. Congratulations. And thank you for everything that you contribute to our community. Um, thank you for taking us through the brand gap map. <laughs> Managed to get it out in you one sentence it. without stumbling. Um, thank you again so much for joining me. What a great conversation with Melissa. Her insights into the significance of branding and how it could impact your business, I think are incredibly valuable. Now, Melissa's helped us understand her brand gap map, which I finally figured out how to say. And it's an excellent tool if your business is looking to pinpoint the brand positioning as it is now and then move towards whatever your desired brand positioning is and so if you're struggling to differentiate yourself from your competitors or to clearly define your voice then I recommend that you make contact with Melissa now if you're a member of the Her Business Network you'll know that she's one of us and you can look her up inside of the member directory Um, and the thing is that she does offer her business members reduced pricing on all her services so that's good to know and you can also check out Melissa's brand gap map over on our show notes page which are at herbusiness.com forward slash 234 herbusiness.com forward slash 234 so I've put her details over on that page that you can contact her and I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you're taking away some actionable insights that are going to help you with your brand and remember your brand is not your logo or the colors you use it's the essence of your business and can truly make a difference in how your clients perceive you so make sure it gets the attention that it deserves so before we go today I do want to thank one of our listeners firstly I appreciate you for listening. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. It's just obviously great to know that I'm not here alone. The listener I want to call out today is Prue Saxby of Indigo Gold. She was listening to episode 230, which was called Breaking Free from an Income Plateau. In fact, she hadn't yet listened to it. And she said this, she said, I can't wait to listen to this, Susie. I look forward to each new episode and I like to re-listen and take notes. I love the idea, she says, of um, taking things to new heights. It's always good to hear strategy options and consider them for my business. Thanks for putting all the information together for us. And Prue's business, she's a grant master. Basically, she helps uh, organizations and business owners write grant applications that get into the yes pile, meaning they get approved. So you can check her details out over at indigogold.com. So I love doing this show for you. I appreciate you listening and sharing the show with your friends. And I love it when I get a comment from you, like the comment I just read read out from Prue. So you can write to me at podcast at herbusiness.com. And like I said, you can get the details from today's show over at Her Business Podcast. Sorry, over at www.herbusiness.com forward slash three three four because this is episode three three four so if you're new to the show be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the episode do me a favor and head on over to apple Podcasts and leave us a rating or review join me next time right here on the her business podcast bye for now